Hello and welcome to Region Locked. Access to digital art tools has become the norm these days, with many artists online making use of drawing tablets, creating pixel art, or simply utilizing a touchscreen device to create pictures within the digital space. Access to these sorts of utilities wasn't always so simple, something which Nintendo acknowledged on the Super Nintendo with the release of Mario Paint alongside a mouse controller. But the company didn't stop there, recognizing that with the advancement of technology, so too could their players' artistic potential. Today, we'll be looking at what could effectively be considered the spiritual successors to Nintendo's Mario Paint, the Mario Artist series. The Mario Artist Suite was created by Nintendo for the 64DD, an add-on peripheral that was exclusive to Japan created for the Nintendo 64. The suite is made up of four titles which can be used in conjunction with one another. These are known as Paint Studio, Talent Studio, The Communication Kit, and Polygon Studio. These releases were created as flagship software for Nintendo's new venture for the Nintendo 64, with the first game, Paint Studio, being released alongside the peripheral in a bundle consisting of the 64DD, Paint Studio, a Nintendo 64 mouse, and a RandNet Internet Service subscription. Originally titled Creator, then Mario Paint 64, before being renamed Picture Maker, then Mario Artist and Camera, until ultimately it was released on December 11th, 1990 as Paint Studio. Paint Studio released alongside the 64DD as a launch title and was originally intended to be a sequel to Mario Paint, but with the ability to utilize the 3D potential of the Nintendo 64. Unsurprisingly, this title is probably the closest of all of the Mario Artist games to Mario Paint, often described as a sort of Adobe Photoshop of the time designed for children. This first entry in the Mario Artist series was commissioned by Nintendo from UK studio Software Creations, who had worked creating tools for music production on the Nintendo 64 console. Players can make use of a variety of brushes, textures, or stamps to create digital art, including paintings, spraying, sketching, and even animation. Various stamps can be used formed from pre-existing artwork by Nintendo, including the entirety of all the original generation Pokémon, a wide array of Mario-related characters, Banjo-Kazooie, Diddy Kong Racing, and a select few others. There's even a unique four-player mode included in the game, allowing multiple players to collaborate on a picture at the same time. Alongside this, there are three different 3D environments that can be explored – Mars, Underwater, and Dinosaur Land. Here, the player can move through the locations while taking pictures of the creatures which inhabit it, often compared to Pokémon Snap. Not only this, but the player can also edit the textures of some of the creatures. Next came Mario Artist Talent Studio, released February 23, 2000. The software came bundled with the Nintendo 64 Capture Cartridge, an adapter that allowed the user to hook up an analog video source, such as a digital camcorder or tape player, and record movies on the N64. The game is mostly an animation suite, allowing the player to create their own 3D characters from a selection of options choosing a character's proportions, facial features, clothing, hair, and so on. The player can also insert their own images onto 3D models. These models can then be used to create movies, with the characters dressed in various clothes and accessories, animated to sound and music, with special effects added on top. The game also supports the Transfer Pack, a controller attachment which allows the user to connect Game Boy titles, specifically allowing the player to connect a Game Boy camera to the system to take photos for use in-game, a feature that was originally planned for Perfect Dark before being removed. After Talent Studio, Nintendo published the Mario Artist Communication Kit on June 29, 2000. The disc gave players the ability to connect to the internet and RandNet's Net Studio, a service that gave users the opportunity to share their creations from the Mario Artist suite with other RandNet users. The service provided a variety of contests, as well as printing services through mail order. The disc for the communication kit also contains content that could be added to other Mario Artist titles. The RandNet service only ran for around 14 months before it was taken offline, effectively rendering the communication kit unusable. 
The last Mario Artist disc to be released was Polygon Studio on August 29th, 2000, with 3D graphics studio Nichimen Graphics heading the technical development. This entry in the suite contains a 3D graphical editor and allows users to design their own 3D models, though with only fairly simplistic control. Originally called Polygon Maker, the game was announced at Nintendo's Space World event in 1996, and then renamed to Polygon Studio for Space World 99. By connecting to RadNet servers, it was possible to order papercraft printouts of user-created 3D models, which would be printed and sent to the user for them to cut out and construct their own paper models. There are also some bonus minigames included in this entry, such as Sound Bomber, providing a selection of different minigames making use of the player-created 3D model within them, as well as Go Go Park, which sees the player wind up their creation in order to have it stop before launching off of a cliff. The game also includes a particularly strange explorable 3D world called the Experimental World. Within this vast environment are an array of toasters, toast included, which guide the player through the world so that they can find new 3D objects to utilize within the model editor. Some parts are known as power blocks, which provide the creation with the ability to move more quickly. Software Creations, the developers of Paint Studio, claimed that the Mario Artist games suffered from butting heads between Nintendo's American and Japanese divisions. Paint Studio originally included audio creation functionality, but it was decided to have this cut from the game and put into an entirely separate piece of software, though this would never be released. The Pickford brothers, who worked with Software Creations, claim on their website, the project was caught up in political infighting between NOA and Nintendo of Japan over who was controlling the project, and eventually the Japanese took control and rejected many of the ideas which had been accepted enthusiastically by the Americans, steering the project in a different direction after John Pickford left Software Creations to form Z2, and throwing away loads of work. The Mario Artist suite was set to be even more extensive than the four titles which saw release. It was intended for audiences to be able to demonstrate creativity in even more different and varied forms, with four more entries in the series being planned, but ultimately going unreleased. These included Game Maker, Graphical Message Maker, Sound Maker, and Video Jockey Maker. Speaking of content being scrapped, these games actually have some relatively unknown or unused data. Within the communication kit, it's possible to view a hidden credit sequence by pressing B on the title screen. Credits will then begin to scroll, and pressing C up will grant control of a cursor. By selecting text on screen, it will change the person or title from katakana or English into hiragana. A hidden video of the late president of Nintendo, Hiroshi Yamauchi, can be found within Talent Studio, where he stumbles over how to talk about what Talent Studio actually is. However, the most interesting secret not seen in-game can be found in Paint Studio, where the English developers clearly left unused text in the game's data, unsavory by Nintendo's standards. Debug text pertaining to the game's initialization includes a fatal error message which reads, Can't create N64DD manager. Expect things to f*** up. The Mario Artist games may have only been received by a small audience, but some elements of the games did become inspiration for future work by Nintendo. Polygon Studios' Sound Bomber behaved as the predecessor to the WarioWare series, including a number of microgames which would go on to be included in WarioWare, though with new names, graphics, and controls. In fact, the first level of the original WarioWare release, being played through a boombox, is a direct reference to the Sound Bomber mode. Not only that, but the Go Go Park minigame served as the predecessor to the Chicken Race minigame from WarioWare as well. Talent Studio, on the other hand, would also serve as the inspiration for a title being developed on the GameCube, which was cancelled, called Stage Debut. Shigeru Miyamoto claims that Stage Debut is actually the direct descendant of Talent Studio, and would have used the Game Boy Advance's GameEye camera add-on, connected to the GameCube via the GBA Link cable, to map the user's face onto 3D characters in-game. The game was demonstrated with Miyamoto and Iwata during a press conference, and while it was never released, the work that went into Stage Debut would be the basis for Nintendo's Mii characters. In 2008, Miyamoto stated, In my mind, it's still alive. There's a portion of the stage debut game which essentially became the Miis and the Mii channel. 
So if we were to ask the question of what would we do if we were to make the Miis more realistic and lifelike, then that might turn into something more like stage debut. So of course, we still have the staff who worked on that and it's something that is done, but in my mind it's something that's always alive. The avatars created within Talent Studio, called Talents, could also be utilized with another game on the 64DD, SimCity 64, where they would inhabit the player's own created cities. This concept of player-made avatars being used across multiple games, creating an almost seamless continuity across the platform, would eventually be realized on the Wii. Nintendo designer Yoshikazu Yamashita believes that much of the work he had done on Talent Studio's avatars would become the foundation for Nintendo's Miis. Most recently, Nintendo made reference to the Mario Artist series within Super Mario Odyssey on the Switch with Mario being able to purchase and adorn himself with the same outfit seen on the cover of the Mario Artist boxes. Of course, ultimately, these games would never receive English localization, and the most obvious reason for this is due to the series' requirement of using a 64DD add-on for the Nintendo 64. As the 64DD never left Japan, neither did these artistic tools. Sales of Paint Studio helped to demonstrate the 64DD's troubles in Japan, and gives weight to its lack of localization, with its developer, Software Creations, estimating that it sold only 7,500 copies. With that said, Luigi Blood, a preserver of 64DD games, has translated the three games within the suite, Paint, Talent, and Polygon Studios. In the end, much of the work behind this creative suite would be left unseen by the mass market. Perhaps with that lack of expansive release, there were also many potential artists whose works would also remain unseen. Introducing the new and official Patreon Builder 5000, sponsored by Chad Burnin. Do you want an Efrid Latherop of your own? How about a Trevor Wooten? Well, now you can. Teach Vitas Vana's sweet kung fu techniques, or see the many faces of Guillermo Chavez. Petit Mew is getting ready for Woodstock. Joshua Bach couldn't wait to get his hands on it, but little did he know Chris Littlefield would pull a Tron and make him into a Jedistotl 7. The three master gamers can watch him dance. Clefairy can watch him strut his funky stuff. Cut off your boy Beowulf's face and make it race. Is it a Malkavio? A Jerry Cherry Pie? No, wait, that's a plane. Why don't you make a Corey Nelson skip for eternity? With 322-322-322 patrons to choose from, you'll have a Jackie H for every occasion and maybe even a Phantom Sonic. Check out the official Patreon Builder 3000 today or whatever I said before, Arkady Skywalker not included. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. I had a really good time creating some wacky pieces of art. I hope that you enjoyed them throughout this video. I'm not really an artist, but at heart, I think we all are. You know, we all know how to paint a little something. Even if it's a stick figure, your art has value, at least to you, and that's what's important. Be an artist at heart, not in practice. I don't know what I'm talking about. That makes no sense.